the camera. Just give it, give it, give it off, give it off, give down, it, down. Give it. If you were a teenager in the 1990s and you almost certainly saw Scream, Wes Craven and Kevin Williamson's take off on the horror genre that Craven himself was so instrumental in creating a couple of decades beforehand. It was a pretty clever film that also worked fairly well as an actual horror movie. And it spawned two sequels shortly after coming out, which were perhaps a little bit less beloved, but still did fairly well at the box office. Now, 11 years after the last Scream movie came out, we're facing down the prospect of Scream 4 The Scream Inning, which promises to reflect on the last decade of horror movies and analyze who's allowed to die and in which order. Before it comes out though, we figured we'd take a little look back at the Scream franchise in this edition of Here's What You Missed. Sydney Prescott is a small town girl living in the slightly lonely world of Woodsboro, California, possessed of creepy boyfriend Billy Loomis and a few creepier friends Sydney's troubled by the impending anniversary of the murder of her mother, but gets more troubled by the fact that a serial killer is stalking the town, killing kids left and right. And is even more disturbed when the killer claims to be responsible for her mother's death and attacks her in her home. Small town cop Dewey does his best to solve the crime, or at least help Sydney, but his efforts are generally for naught thanks to his bumbling Barney Fifishness. Her father's nowhere to be found, but have no fear because Gail Weathers, tabloid reporter extraordinaire, who says that the man Sydney claimed killed her mother was actually innocent, comes to town to recover the events and generally add to Sydney's already dangerous tension levels. After the principal of their high school is killed and school is canceled, the kids decide to throw a celebratory house party in which all the various threads start coming together. Sydney and her boyfriend have sex, yay, which means she is no longer a virgin and can now die by the conventions of horror films, boo. But before that happens, Ghostface appears and guts her boyfriend, yeah! The body count starts to mount with Sydney's friend Tatum, a mostly harmless cameraman, and Dewey getting the axe, or the knife as the case may be. But soon enough, the real killer is revealed to be both Billy Loomis and their mutual friend, Stu. They start stabbing each other in order to make it look as if they were merely surviving victims of the man they intend to frame for the crime, Sydney's father, who they've conveniently kept in the closet for days. Whew! It seems as though Sydney's mother slept with Billy's father, which caused his mother to leave the family, so of course the logical thing to do is kill a dozen people with a six inch long knife. Freud would have a field day with this. Alas, before their plot can work, Stu starts losing blood, Gail storms back in to distract them, Sydney escapes and manages to kill Stu, Gail shoots Billy, Billy comes back to life, Sydney shoots in the head, and we all live happily ever after, including Dewey who survives his wounds. And all is safe in the town of Woodsboro. For now. Peace never lasts though, and Scream 2 picks up the action with the release of the film Stab, based on a book Weathers wrote about the murders in the previous film. We're starting to get meta. At a sneak preview of the movie, the lady who married Will Smith and a young Mike Tomlin get horrifically murdered right in the theater, thus setting off another chain of murders by Ghostface. The suspects this time include Sydney's new boyfriend, Derek, their high-pitched friend, Mickey, sorority girl, Cece, as well as a number of returning cast members from the first film. Dewey returns to the campus to help protect Sydney, and redoubtable Gail Weathers appears as well, ever hungry for her next scoop. Impressively enough, she brings with her Cotton Weary, the man Sydney had falsely accused of raping and killing her mother. Suspect number one? The body count starts to rack up again, with Cece being thrown off a balcony, annoying Scream 1 veteran Randy finally getting off in a van, and Dewey getting brutally murdered in front of Gail, who discovers Cotton with blood on his hands and naturally assumes, hey, he might actually be the killer she always said he wasn't. Unfortunately for Sydney, she finds herself on stage with Ghostface, who quickly dispatches her boyfriend, but not before revealing himself as the dastardly Mickey. Murder number two appears shortly thereafter as a local newspaper reporter reveals herself to be Mrs. Loomis, Billy Loomis's mother, who's been paying Mickey's tuition in exchange for his help offing Sydney who killed her son. Mickey, for his part, just wants to be famous, but alas, Mrs. Loomis shoots him herself to tidy up loose ends, which leads to him shooting Gail, which leads to Sydney and Mrs. Loomis duking it out, which leads to Cotton showing up at the perfect time to shoot Mrs. Loomis, which leads to Mickey jumping up and startling everyone, which leads to Mickey getting shot a million times, which leads to everyone who's still alive, including Dewey, who survives thanks to old scar tissue heading off into the sunrise, their long nightmare finally over at last. Until Scream 3, that is, which starts out with Ghostface brutally murdering Cotton Weary and his girlfriend because he refuses to divulge the whereabouts of Sydney, who's hiding away in the hills, doomed to a life alone. Unbeknownst to her, Stab 3 is in the process of being filmed, but not for long, as the cast members of the movie start meeting up with the real people they're based on and everyone starts dying. At the scenes of all the crimes, pictures of the young Maureen Prescott, Sydney's mother, are left, indicating that she has some kind of connection to the murders. Quickly dispatched is actress Sarah Darling, followed quickly by a condescending bodyguard and actor Tom Prince. Dewey manages to shoot Ghostface a few times, but that suspiciously doesn't seem to kill him. 
All this murder seems like it sets the mood for, guess what, another party thrown by the film's producer, John Milton, in honor of the birthday of the director, Roman Bridger. In attendance are, of course, Gail Weathers and Dewey, along with the cast and crew of the film, including a bizarre early American appearance from Emily Mortimer as the actress who plays Sydney. Creepy party in a mansion full of secret passages, time to get murdered. Ghostface nabs Roman, then the cast members, but Dewey and Gale manage to stay alive throughout the chaos. Sydney, of course, arrives a bit late to the party, because why not, and is quickly cornered by Ghostface, who reveals himself to be Roman, who faked his own death and is angry with Sydney because he's her half-brother. Maureen Prescott was raped in the very room that they're in, bore a child and abandoned him, and when Roman tracked her down, she slammed the door in his face. Obviously a lovely woman who seems to inspire strong opinions even years after her death. He, of course, intends to frame Sydney for all the deaths he's committing, which leads to him shooting her in the chest. The end. But of course that's not the end, because she's wearing a bulletproof vest. She manages to get up, overpower Roman, and finally kill him. The end. But it's not the end, because he's still alive and gets shot ten times his own bulletproof vest before finally getting shot in the head and dying zombie style. The film finally concludes with Dewey proposing to Gale, and Sydney returning to her cabin in the woods with Detective McDreamy, a survivor of the latest rounds of murders. The end? So what's going to happen in Scream 4? Well, I'm guessing that the corpse of Marine Prescott will reanimate itself and start murdering people left and right, because having dozens of people killed in your name surely seems like it might imbue a dead lady with some kind of demonic powers. Or, alternately, I think Sidney Prescott should finally snap and be revealed as the killer. What's actually going to happen, though? We'll have to wait for this weekend to find out, but in the meantime, hope you enjoyed this overview of the Scream franchise. And please do check out Screen.com for more compelling video content. The end. Or is it?